Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're having a look at a Lafayette um, 1200 FM AM FM sideband CB radio with a um, interesting SSB receive fault but before we start don't forget to like share subscribe comment join the Facebook group have a look at my website join patreon and now a quick word from today's video sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and printed board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They offer a wide range of services including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and much more. PCBWay also offer a prototype PCB assembly service with component sourcing and online quote with 24 hour delivery services. PCB Way is committed to meeting all of your PCB needs. They offer quality, on time delivery, and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards start at $5 with 24 hour turnaround. Get an instant quote by visiting PCBWay.com or click on the link below to check them out. So here's our Lafayette 1200 FM. Now let's see what works and what doesn't work. So initially, AM and FM look like they're okay. So we'll just try some receiver checks. So I'm transmitting on my other radio. Just going through the bands. As you can see, it's receiving nicely. Low band, mid band, and high band work just nicely. So there's a transmit, as you can see it transmits, even transmits on SSB. Transmits on FM, transmits on AM, not a problem. So, our issue. So yeah, transmit and receive work fine, but as soon as we switch it to SSB, that happens. I'll show you that again, and it's gone. Absolutely nothing on SSB, USB and LSB. But we are transmitting. So it looks like we have a receive fault of some variety on this so I suppose we better get the meter out and have a look Let's see if we can't find some voltages that are wrong somewhere so I took the lid off and immediately seen this one of the main smoothing capacitors has leaked its goodness and gone through the board and lifted up the um, green solder mask. So we can deal with that, no problem. Pins two and three on the first mixer have been joined together. That's fine, that just increases the gain a little bit. Just have a look at the PLL area. See whether we've had our usual cut tracks and what have you. It's a little bit dirty, but it looks okay. I've seen a lot worse. So I think that should be fine. And everything else in the radio looks nice. I think that says 7636 on the PLL. So 36 week of 1976 of so that PLL makes it quite an old one. But apart from that, everything looks absolutely fine inside the radio. No problems at all. Everything's nice and um, everything's nice and clean, tidy. It's actually in very good condition inside. So, I've de desoldered the capacitor. I've just got to break it loose from its glue. I 
Mm. It looks okay, but we're going to replace it anyway. And I've took the one out next door to it as well, just in case. So I'm going to use a little bit of white vinegar on the cotton bud, just to neutralise anything that's left. As you can see, the green solder mask has lifted off. But luckily it hasn't done any permanent damage to the trace by the looks of it. So I've just given it a little scrape with a screwdriver. Just to get the edges up. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to replace the green solder mask. I know it's only cosmetic but it makes the job look right. So I'm just making sure everything's neutralised on there. Making sure there's no nasty chemicals left. And those are the capacitors I've took out and those are the ones I've put in. And as you can see, same or better values but a lot smaller. So I've soldered it into place and now I'm going to apply some UV green solder mask. Just to cover the exposed copper. It's only cheap this stuff and it makes the job look okay when it's done. Also protects the copper as well. So I'm just applying it with the end of my screwdriver just to get it into all the places making sure I cover as much as I can just cover up the final bit there, very nice So now I just need to get the ultraviolet light, it's just a USB one. We'll place that over the top for a few minutes and that should cure it. Only a few pounds off eBay these, so well worth having. So that looks okay. Give it a little touch with a screwdriver and it looks like it's solid. So let's try and trace down this receive fault. So I've got my signal generator, channel one low band. And as you can hear, we are receiving on FM, but as soon as we go into SSB, nothing. So I'm just having a look on the crystal filter. We have got something on the crystal filter. I'm not sure whether its amplitude is correct. But some parts of the sideband circuit are working at least. So adjusting the amplitude on the um, signal generator doesn't do much difference. I think it's supposed to show something like this. But part of the sideband circuit is doing something, at least. So let's carry on. So I want to inject a signal into the crystals filter this time. So we've got the tiny SA on output. and we have movement only a little but we have movement when we turn the output on and off
So I'm just having a probe round. See whether I can get any life. Try and understand what's going on. But as soon as you switch to the sideband, it just goes dead. So it's something I did notice. So we have sound and we have a buzz on the audio amplifier. Switch it to sideband, it's nothing. It's almost like the squelch circuit's kicked in. And nothing, no matter where you touch, no buzz. The confusion thickens. So I put my meter onto the AGC test point, and this should be reading about two volts in SSB. Now the RV has no effect on FM. But as soon as we switch it to SSB, you can see it's going from 6 volts down to 3 volts. Now this should be at 2 volts. So there's our pin 50 or point 15. It goes all the way around and it's fed from point 22. And if we go up, up the circuit, follow it round, follow it across, follow it down, and there's our 7 volts. With a few components in the way, that could be it. So I took the FET out, because this was the only place that the voltage was coming from. And the component tester says that it's faulty. So the FET has gone short and it was pushing 6 volts onto the AGC line which was obviously making the AGC come on really really hard. So as you can see how a FET is reading absolutely not correct. So I found a FET in a box of parts I had and we're going to try 0.15 now. So we're at 3.6 volts and 0.15 which is the test point for the EGC. And it's still a bit high but now we can adjust it. And there we go, on she comes. So that was an absolute pain to find. So to sum it up, we had 6 volts on the AGC line. And we followed the circuit back and something was injecting 6 volts. And it was that FET. So there's the our crystal filter. And the output looks the same, but the input is a lot bigger. So yeah, quite a bit of a pain of a fault to find this one. But the clue was there. The clue was the 6 volts on the AGC line. So, yep, yeah, output of the crystal filter looks okay. So there's our Lafayette 1200 FM working nicely. Just needs a good alignment and should be good to go. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that lot, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, have a look at my website, for all my boards and what have you. And a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Go and check them out. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.